The first thing I'd like to talk about is where we all use Einstein's space-time every day. That is, when we use SETNAV. Uh, now, you may know how SETNAV works. There are satellites orbiting the Earth, about two dozen of them, and each of them has an accurate atomic clock and a radio beacon that sends a radio signal from there. And uh, what your cell phone does, right, with uh, GPS there, it receives those radio signals from the satellites, it receives those time uh, signals. And if at any time there are four satellites above the horizon, from those four radio signals that come, your cell phone can compute where exactly you are. Now, this doesn't sound sophisticated, does it? I mean, the basic geometry would have been understood by ancient Greeks uh, 2,000 and some years ago. Newton, 300 years ago, would have understood why those satellites go around the Earth. And Maxwell, 150 years ago, would even have understood how those uh, radio uh, waves propagate. And if any of these people did the calculation, they would have got it wrong. It took Einstein, 100 years ago, to develop the maths, the description of space-time. That does the mathematics right. And the issue is that the time down here on Earth, it's not exactly the same thing as the time up there in the satellites, time up there runs at a somewhat different rate. If the ancient Greeks did that calculation, they could make Saturn have work for about two minutes, and then it would run out of sync. But using Einstein's description of space-time, we can make Saturn have work permanently. Einstein's description of space-time is something that we all use every day. Einstein's de description of space-time saves lives. You shouldn't believe everything that Einstein predicts. Eh? And uh, the prototype question is, what do you think happens if you fall into a black hole? Now, an astronomer might not care, because when somebody falls into a black hole, they can't come back and tell us uh, what they saw. They can't even communicate with, uh, with us uh, in any way. Uh, but uh, we could ask, what do they feel after they've fallen into the black hole? And Einstein says uh, that they keep falling in, and within a finite amount of time, as measured by their own watch, there are forces that grow infinite. They squeeze you in some directions, they stretch you in other directions. There are pressures that go infinite. Uh, there are densities that go infinite. There are temperatures that go infinite. And all this by a finite time according to your watch. If your theory says that at a finite moment of time there's an infinite temperature that comes up, you don't believe your theory anymore. Uh, so what should Einstein be replaced with? So that's what I and my colleagues in Nottingham and my colleagues all over the world are working on. We should, describe, uh, we should um, replace Einstein's uh, theory by something better, something that, sh uh, that should describe space-time as a quantized, uh, by a quantized theory. Now that's a technical term, but all other known interactions in the nature are described in a quantized way, and that's uh, how we think Einstein's theory should be replaced. Maybe in uh, 30 years' time, one of the persons now watching this video will be making their own video, and then in 30 years' time we'll be able to tell whether we know here we're on the right track to replace Einstein.